Okay, we're in Carrera 8.5 Pro uh, Beta, build number 204. I'm D'Artan Beck, and we're going to have a look at shaders. We're gonna, uh, I just want you to feel more comfortable with what you do with shaders in Carrera, how you get your, basically how you get your content from DAS to work in Carrera and give you your good renders, okay? So sharpen your pencil, uh, fasten your seatbelt, and enjoy the ride. Okay, so for starters, um, let's go ahead and crank open a new medium scene, and here we are. Um, I personally like to just uh, set up the camera right away, um, and then get out of it and get into the director's camera. It's just habit, okay? Uh, another thing I like to do is take that camera and make it so that I can't see it. You know, it's always getting in my way. I don't need to see it anyway. Not now. Okay, here we have a basic scene with uh, uh, the default light. Everything is just default. Now let's um, get bring up a classic example. Um, Let's go to the V4 runtime and grab V4 right out of the box, just the way it passed it. Uh, right here. And we'll bring in V4 straight out of the box. And we're not going to need to apply any morphs or anything like that. We're just going to go over shaders. Let's get a closer look at the face. Okay, there we go. And then we go back to the director's camera and go set position to camera one. The reason I like to work in the director's camera is because it doesn't add anything to my undo buffer. Okay, I can do all the camera movements I want and it just doesn't bother anything. Alrighty, so um, for the textures, uh, just want to show you something. Select model and go into the texture room here with this paintbrush. And what you'll see right away on the right hand side, this is your list of material zones. Okay? And I'd like you to know that uh, this shader, the next one, the next one, the next one and the next one, you know, these first five shaders are all identical. Okay, but they all use a separate shader. Okay, and then you'll find the same thing here with these three, and then you'll find the same thing here with all of these with the exception of the fingernail, and a lot of times the, the fingernail and toenail, uh, those are the same as these two, and then if you want to add gloss to them, you have to add a separate, you know, you have to change this one. So. These are all identical right there. There's five that are identical and then there's two more that are identical and then a bunch in here. And so what that does to your computer, if you just keep letting this build up in the, in the shaders by adding, adding and adding and adding um, content, uh, you will experience sluggishness just because of that, okay? But the other reason that I'm going to, that I keep harping about what I'm about to do is because if, if you make a change to this one, you're gonna have to make that same change to this one or, or it's gonna look off. You will see it off. And you know, if you're doing manual changes with a color, you know, and getting that color just right, you know, um, it, that's you know you, you just don't want to have to go in and do that with all of those different ones but plus like I said it can it can really build up on your system resources and that we don't want so how we what, how we deal with that <clears throat> is we uh, we come in go edit remove unused masters and then we come to consolidate duplicate shaders and now your shader list has just gotten much more manageable now we come back in here and now when you open this I, I, I'm sorry I have to change that let's uh, let's come in here and change
change that. Okay, now we can go back in there. And look at this one. And what what's going on here is we have this really bright blue mixing with the texture map. And we don't want that. Um, how you fix that is you just simply drag source one into the color channel. I'm going to undo that with control Z so you can see that again. Right now your color channel is, a, is in a multiply mode between source one and source two. Okay, we only want source one. Source two was um, a, a way of getting a special look within Poser with this um, when when this was a brand new um, really hip thing uh, and still is fantastic. I mean, it's really hard to beat this model. Um, another thing that you want to look out for um, that can add uh, plastic look is your your highlight channel. And if if you bring this up like that, see, you're gonna you're gonna have uh, and, and some some models come that way uh, that's the way they that's the way they show up um, when you first import them so the way to fix that is you just click on this little triangle okay now this part is really important for all of your um, content that comes in because this it's, um, it comes in, often your, your highlight will, will start off with a color in it of some sort. Um, some of them it's, you know, like right in here or whatever. And it's, it's set up in a way where it looks really good with um, what the artist was envisioning in, in Poser, okay? And um, so there's nothing wrong with the shaders the way they come. They were just, it just, it, um, when it comes into Carrara, it's red slightly different. And what's, what's going to happen is you're going to get this. Okay, see the difference? And see that's still blue because we didn't fix that. So let's go back in. And now you know um, <clears throat> what this does is if this is black, that means that's the same exact thing as if you have it at a value of zero. Um, 100 is white and zero is black, okay? And gray is everywhere in between. And then if you wanna add color, then you bring it into color and um, uh, black, will bring in no shine and just the slightest the slightest difference uh, coming in off of black will actually make a, a quite a difference in there now your shininess controls whatever is in this channel in a way where zero um, spreads out that color onto the surface um, using whatever light source it has available um, from the direction of the light that's coming and it'll spread it across as far as it can go okay now if you start to lessen that and bring it in um, like I usually if I want something really really shiny I'll go right around the 18 16 somewhere in there um, 21 maybe and I'll crank this baby right up like um, uh, put a value in and let's put it at a hundred you know that's white okay and what that does is it, um, it it uses a tighter angle um, for for where it places the highlight okay and so that's how you make things look either wet or shiny glossy um, anything like that okay so in this situation we 
um, a, a really quick fix if you don't want to um, play with shaders um, is to just drag that to zero or like I say if it's in color mode just hit this little triangle and it turns black okay um, there you go and then while we're at it let's go ahead and fix the face just drag that up there that's make sure that's black and then one more we want to get uh, the limbs and get that get rid of that blue and make sure that this is black okay now um, now that we have that all fixed that's where you can stop if um, you're not interested in um, going further and making a, a really nice shader okay even though um, it's very basic at that point you'll see that um, it's actually really pretty decent and let's just uh, hit control R not even sure what the settings are at here let's look uh, 640 by 480 um, bitmap uh, 2 4 that's a you know that's impressive that's an if, if you're gonna have a default um, basic render just for um, checking out what's going on that is what what comes in here is actually really decent uh, um, I'm, I'm impressed uh, because you don't want to have it too crazy at first you you'd rather go up than have to go down you know if you're gonna hit control R to see what your renders at you don't want your your system to all of a sudden choke and then you know if you haven't saved your file but but see that's actually pretty decent you know so um, what we can do from here if you want to make it even better right is you come in here and now this product most products do uh, come with something that you can put in the highlight channel they come with something you could put in the bump channel some of them uh, come with something you can use in displacement and displacement works really good and if you um, use it that's great if you have a displacement map but you don't want to add the extra render time um, sometimes you can get a decent effect by uh, using a, a multiplier uh, in your in your bump map and, and multiplying your bump and your your uh, displacement maps together and then in the top shader you want to crank your bump up a little bit higher than normal because you're, you're utilizing the two maps.